Well, greetings, Boise State fans. Happy Monday to you. BJ Reigns here with Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. John Mallory is here as well for our Mondays with Mallory segment. So we are broadcasting live. If you're watching us on the uh, KTIK Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube channels as well, we appreciate that. Uh, Johnny, it's Monday. We got a good show planned, man. Uh, good to chat with you. How are you? Thanks, BJ. Fun weekend. I'm ready to go. And uh, what is it, April 25th already? crazy man this year's flying by thanks we had, for a great, me on. had a great time at the idaho youth sports commission dinner bronco nation news teaming up donating some money uh to them for our golf tournament so we got a chance to check that over the weekend and saw you there and saw you schmoozing with drew bledsoe and it was it was a good time man yeah it was man drew bledsoe shook his hand his hands is like mine like i don't know to hear like you could tell how easy it was for that dude to spin a football and protect that thing some of those guys they just have monstrous hands, man. And Drew Bledsoe was one of those. And that was a fun opportunity for me to get to meet him and and you as well, get to, get to chat him up and just to see everybody else there. It was a fun event. And um, cool that the state of Idaho and Boise and everybody behind, you know, the Idaho Youth Sports Commission is so heavily involved. I bet they raised, BJ. I don't have numbers or what, for how much money they probably raised that night, but I'm sure it was a lot and good for everybody involved. Oh, according to their little online uh, counter thing, it was over two hundred grand, right? In four hours. Yep, That's some of those. Shabby. Yep, it was pretty cool. Good to see Coach Rice there wearing his son's jersey. You had uh, Andy Avalos wearing the uh, Leighton Van Der Esch jersey. So you went with the uh, the natural. Uh, I liked that one, man. I went with Roy Hobbs, man. Yep. One of my favorite movies of all time, uh, The Natural. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of good compliments on that jersey, but. There was a lot of really cool jerseys oh, there. Oh, man, I, the, the Kirk Herb Street Ohio State one still stands out to me as a pretty <laughs> yeah. sweet one. The Happy Gilmore uh, you know, Bruins jersey or whatever it was. Uh, and, heck, I went with the Brett Hall jersey, and we ended up getting to talk to Skip Hall about it, uh, the old Boise State coach. But I found out that Brett Hall's brother played not only played at Boise State, but in one game against Nevada, had three carries and three touchdowns. Oh, Bart Hall, I think. Yeah, was Bart? yeah Brett three, and Bart. three carries for 10 yards and three touchdowns on three carries in a game That's against a Nevada nugget. once. So. You know, which NHL Hall of Fame hockey player had a brother who played running back, essentially, at Boise State? Great trivia question. The correct answer would be Brett Hall. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I, I didn't know that. But, uh, yeah, no, it was a fun weekend, and and uh, we're, we're going to kick it off here with a, a fun show on a Monday. We're going to talk Marcus Shaver Jr., obviously, because we're continuing our series today. Today's Marcus Shaver Jr. Day. We'll get to that in a little bit. But we're going to have, in just a minute here, Montel Cozart come on. We're going to chat with him, Johnny, former uh, Boise State quarterback, went up to the CFL, won a championship, and was back home uh, – you know, Ron Counts did a nice story in the Statesman, was back home and just uh, selling cars and had nothing to do. And then all of a sudden uh, gets the call and and uh, he's back in the USFL. Now two players with Tyler Rasa and Montel Cozart from Boise State playing in the USFL. So I don't know if you've watched much of the league, Johnny, or, or thoughts, but uh, pretty cool that a guy like Montel gets a chance to extend his football career. Yeah, that's a good story, right? And those stories are part of the reason why I always cross my fingers that some form of spring football in this country will work. Now, it hasn't yet, BJ, right? They've tried every which way. And matter of fact, the XFL is now coming back for a third time next year, and The Rock is behind it. Now, the USFL is the one spring league that kind of worked, but that was 40 years ago, and you had future Hall of Fame players like Steve Young, Jim Kelly, Reggie White, just to name a few in that league, which was loaded with good talent. Now, I don't know where this league is in a talent perspective, but I hope it catches on because I like having spring football. Now, am I watching it over NBA playoff games? No. Am I watching it over when my Mariners are actually winning games? No. But it's there if I want it, and I go back and forth. I see some stuff here and there. So yeah, I've been I've been watching a little bit of this league, but I like that it's available for opportunities like Montel Cozart to have. I mean, the good the good guy was flipping cars, and now all of a sudden, I think the salary for the USFL BJ is about forty five hundred dollars per week. So that's pretty darn good money uh, for people who can uh, you know who are willing to still play football and put their bodies on the line for forty. I mean, that's it's not as much as an NFL practice squad player makes but it's somewhere in that ballpark kind of so good for them and hopefully Montel 
gets to hang in this league and keep playing football, keep going to the ballpark, and keep getting paid to do it. Well, great job. Uh, we, we bring on our guests, and you started off by saying you don't watch the league very much, man. Uh, that's always a nice way to do it. But uh, Montel, no, man, you, man. <laughs> Montel, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, good to catch up with you. And uh, how are things going, man? Everything's going well. Um, right now, I'm just staying up in the hotel, so it's pretty nice. They have everyone staying here, so it's pretty convenient. We have our meetings here. Um, the training room and everything is here as well, so it's pretty convenient staying up in the hotel. But Everything's going well. It feels good to be back in the football groove and being back in that element. Well, it feels good to have you back on the uh, waves here. And I was going to say radio waves, but I guess social media waves here in Boise, Idaho, man. You were obviously mm -hmm. one, of, one of the fan favorites uh, in 2017 when you came in and played in every game and, and helped that team uh, do some really big things. And, and we watched you go to Canada and do your thing, and now you get a chance again to be back. And what, what, what has it been like for you the last week or so, just, just – being back in this element and you think to not knowing what your career was going to do for you. And, uh, you know, we mentioned that you were selling cars and stuff just to be back here and putting on the pads again and being part of a team again. What has this experience been like for you? Uh, it's been awesome. Um, like you said, a couple of days ago, I was selling cars. So, um, and you know, I think that just goes to a testament to show, Hey, I've never done that before in my life. And, uh, you know, when I got the call from coach Colts, I called and I told him, Hey, you got a guy who was selling cars and never done that before in my life. I feel like I can come in and learn your offense, and I've done that. Um, I've only been here for three days, so I got the offense just in case, you know, something happens or, you know, someone goes down, you know, that next man up mentality. But um, it's been awesome to get back to, you know, playing football, being back in the QB room, being back in the offensive line room, talking football, talking X's and O's. It's been a pleasure. What was that like, uh, you know, trying to live out that dream, trying to stay ready, stay alive, but not knowing if the, any call was ever going to come? And and uh, what was, you know, your day-to-day -day like in terms of uh, working a real job to pay the bills and things? And then what was it like when you got that call? You know, it's tough. Um, you wake up each and every day and you, you see guys, uh, you know, no, no, no shade or harm to the guys that you see, you know, pursuing their dreams, but you see guys that you played against, guys that you – um, we're teammates with, and you're like, man, I know I belong, you know, and it, and it's hard, um, but, you know, it just shows, you know, that perseverance and that hard work to continue to do your due diligence of, you know, when I was selling cars, I would go work out at 6 or 7 a.m., go sell cars for 10 to 12 hours a day, and then sometimes, like on my lunch break, I would go to quarterback workouts with uh, my QB coach, Justin Hoover, or with just some guys who are free agents um, in my local hometown, but, you know, in the midst of, you know, like I said, selling cars, sometimes I'm going to go throw on my lunch break and then going back to work and selling cars to be there, at, you know, 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. at night. Um, it just shows that, you know, I was willing to do whatever it took to get back to this point. And, you know, it, it truly shows that, you know, hard work pays off. Montel, you talked about, you know, Skip Holtz giving you a call and saying, hey, we want to bring you in. And you're saying, hey, coach, I can pick up this playbook quick. You know, I, I never sold cars before either. And here, look at me now. So what's been the biggest challenge? How do you learn in offense, Montel, in mm -hmm. three days? What strategies? I mean, uh, how, how does one go about that? It would seem awfully complicated to me. Most definitely. Um, the hardest part, I would say, is taking what's called, you know, snag in one offense where in the previous offense it was called spot, you know. And I'm when I'm going through and I'm learning, I'm like, okay, snag is like spot. And then just being able to transition those words to be able to correlate to the offense that's run ran here. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, football is football. You know, I ran all these plays before. I've been through numerous of offenses. The, the hardest part, is, like I said, just transitioning what Bronco means here to where Stallion means there. You know, just making that transition of the memorization of remember what each play was. Mont Montel, you've – Played the Canadian Football League. You've seen the CFL up close. You know, uh, this is why I'm asking you this. I would assume that the CFL is the second best football league on this planet professionally compared to the NFL. I know you haven't been in the USFL much more than a few days. Where is the talent level in the USFL compared to the Canadian Football League? How close is that? It's up there. Um there's guys who are here that has NFL experience. There's guys who are here who played in the CFL, like Nate Holly. Um, he was on Calgary with me. He's here playing. He's on our team as well. Um, and there's been guys that I've seen throughout um, 
you know, just in the hall and going on, on our way to meetings, I have on like a Calgary shirt or I have on a Boise shirt. And then we'll be like, hey, you know, I played against you when you're in Hamilton or I played against you when you're in Edmonton. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely equivalent. Like I said, it's guys who are in the league, you know, maybe who got injuries or something happened where they got released from a team and now they're here trying to get back to that to that goal. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's that much big of a drop off at all. Montel Cozart, our guest here on Bronco Nation News. BJ Rains and John Mallory uh, with you on a Monday. And uh, RealPaint.com, our title sponsor. Appreciate them. Uh, Powering people, pride in painting. The official paint and coatings company at Boise State Athletics. And Montel, you know, just just what's motivated you for the 12-hour workouts, for the throwing before, you know, the crack of dawn and, and staying out late? I mean, what, 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 why was it so important to you to not give up on this dream? Um, it was important to me because, you know, I have, you know, little cousins, I have nieces, I have, uh, you know, relatives and best friends who, you know, wanted to pursue the professional dream where they couldn't because of their situation or, like I said, injuries that may have prevented it. And I felt like if I stopped, you know, I would be letting those guys down. And, you know, it was, it was tough. It was tough getting up at 6 and 7 a.m. and going to go work, you know, a 10-hour shift. You know, I was kind of having a, a moment there probably two weeks ago. I texted one of my good friends. Uh, I was like, man, this stuff is hard. Like, it makes you want to kind of give up sometimes because you don't know what's next. And and like I said earlier, you know, it's hard when you see guys that you played against in college or played with or as teammates. And you're like, man, I know I belong. You know, I know I belong on that, that next level and I know I can get there. But, um, you know, I feel like I would be letting everyone down um, if I was to, you know, give it up. And I feel like I'm still young. I feel like I still got plenty left in the tank. You know, I'm 26 years old. So, I feel like I can still play another, you know, I would love to play like Tom Brady and go that long, but, you know, I feel like I got another, you know, five to 10 years to play for sure. Montel, when you're talking about the living situation and I like how the USFL is doing this in the bubble, it cuts down obviously a lot of costs. What are the amenities like? Is the food pretty good, man? Yeah. So we get breakfast every day, um, breakfast every day. Sometimes we get lunch. Um, most of the time, lunch and dinner is on yourself. But so every now and then, like yesterday after our game, um, you know, we came in, watched the film. We had breakfast and then we had dinner as a team. So sometimes you get lunch and uh, dinner sometimes provided. But it's it's nice. We've got a weight room here. We, our meter rooms are here. The training room is here. Everything is right, right in the amenity. So um, it's, it's really convenient. Some guys have moved off campus um, mm. just, just for the – the fact of having to, you know, live by themselves. I mean, I stay in a hotel room by myself, um, but some guys want to live because some people have cars here, so they don't mind driving. But um, I think it's really convenient. I think U.S. and Phil doing a great, great thing by having everyone hub here to start. You know, I know eventually they probably want to branch out to have everyone in their own cities, you know, Houston being Houston, New Orleans being New Orleans. But I think yeah. it's a good start for sure. So, so what is your outlook, Montel? I know you were added to the roster because of an injury, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, is that guy out for a while? I mean, are, are you safe here? What's kind of your outlook? And, 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 and how important is this for you just to get your name back out there? So whether whatever happens here, maybe there's another team that's going to need a QB or, or who knows, we got the XFL coming around next year too. I mean, well, how, just to get back out there and get practicing again and get your name out there, what can that do for you? Yeah, you said it right on the head. You know, I, I, I was in Calgary for three years. Um, I've essentially been a free agent for a year. My contract ended last year, but I haven't played for two years because of 2020. We had COVID, and we didn't get to play that year of football. But um, like you said, it, it's it's good for me to get back out there and people say, hey, you know, Montel Cozart, he's still pursuing the dream. He's still pursuing, pursuing the sport. Um, so like you said, you got the XFL coming up. You know, this season is over. Hey, maybe I get in there and get to play a couple games, get some more film. I think that's my biggest thing. Um, I haven't had any film since 2019 uh, when I was up in Calgary. So um, get some film, get some up-to-date film, be able to send it out to teams, send it out to, you know, someone who may need a quarterback. Um, I think this is a good opportunity for me. Um, and I think this league, it gives everyone an opportunity. I think when I talked to Coach Coach Holtz, I talked to him, like you said, he, uh, Alex Magoo, he sprained his ankle. And I was asking, hey, am I coming in for the three to five weeks that he's possibly out or – two to four weeks, however long he's possibly out. And he said, no, we want to bring you in because we want you on our team. We want you to be active. So, you know, they brought me in to be a guy uh, for their for their team and be able to help their team. So, 
you know, I was all in about it. Montel, what's uh, what's more difficult, reading a defense, reading a coverage, telling if it's cover two or cover three, or saying, you know what, is this customer, am I going to be able to sell this dude a new car? <laughs> I, I, do I want to put this dude in an SUV or some yeah. type of coupe versus cover two and cover three, man? <laughs> um, I would definitely say probably a customer because um, you got to, I mean, they're they're both the same, you know. You got to get a read for the coverage. You got to get a read for the customer. Um, <laughs> sometimes when the customer come in there, you know, I was selling Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram, man. You know, like the Wranglers and stuff like that. Most of the time, those people already knew what they wanted. But um, you have some people who come in there who has no idea, you know. But they're on the car lot, so they're looking to buy something. That's how I looked at it. Um, what so, feels better? What feels better? Throwing a touchdown pass or selling a brand new Jeep Wrangler? Oh, throwing six, throwing touchdown all day. I take that feeling every day. Well, you did that 10 times at Boise State uh, in 2017. You rushed for four other ones, man, and and, uh, we really appreciate your time. We hope to see you out there throwing touchdowns in the USFL real soon. You're one of two now. Tyler Rossa, the kicker, is playing for Tampa Bay from Mm -hmm. Boise State. We're going to have him on the show tomorrow. So cool to see you guys uh, still out there pursuing that dream, still playing, and uh, heck, forget the XFL, forget the USFL. We hope to see you pop up in the NFL here real soon, man. Thanks for your time. Stay in touch. Rock Chalk, man, the big basketball championship. I'm sure you were pumped yes, to be back in Kansas City for that. But yeah, uh, we, we, we appreciate nice. it, man. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. You know, you guys have always been there since, you know, I think like day one that I stepped on Boise. And you guys have been there. So I appreciate you guys always. Well, we're rooting for you, man. Best of luck. And uh, hopefully you can get out there on that field soon, man. Appreciate it, brothers. There he is, Montel Cozar. Appreciated uh, him coming on and joining us. And Johnny, just a, a good dude, and and obviously uh, really cool to see him still pursuing that dream. And and uh, does ho- I do really hope it works out for him here. That would have been nice if if he somehow, some way, would have had a COVID year. You know, he was one of those guys who comes in as a grad tran, and it just it wasn't well, the one year wasn't enough. You know, you wanted. I remember Brian Harson said something about that. Like, gosh, I wish. We had had this guy longer because he just fit in our program so well, so quickly. And that happens sometimes. And you can tell when you interview a guy like that, good kid and uh, actually good young man. Now I should say Uh, I'm pulling for him, man. That's my, uh, that's my new favorite quarterback in the USFL. I hope he gets some time. I saw they played yesterday and uh, he hasn't got in yet. Their quarterback, Jamar Smith, I believe who played for Skip Holtz in college at Louisiana tech. So, Obviously, they have a good relationship there. Mon- Montel's probably going to need uh, maybe another injury to see some significant time there as a starter. Let's, let's um, hope some way or another he finds his way on the field. Hey, he, he's in an elusive class, man. He has started a game on the blue and won a game on the blue and, and thrown a touchdown pass on the blue. I mean, I, I know Boise State's had a, a long history of quarterbacks, man. I bet you to go down and find a list of quarterbacks in the last 20 years that have started you know, a game at quarterback on the blue is probably not a big a list as you think. Yeah, good point. I mean, Boise State usually likes guys and like and Rippon started four years, right? Yep. Ellen but- started four years, right? Yeah, Z was three. Dinwiddie was three. Bart was three. I Maybe mean, the one Harry year of Grant Hedrick, you know, the one year of Joe Southwick, Taylor uh, Tharp. But I bet you you're what less than in the last twenty years at quarterback for Boise State less than. Is it 10 or less, maybe? Or around yeah, 10? It's, it's, it's probably around there. I mean, you yeah. had your BJ Rodies who came yeah. in for a few games here or there, but uh okay, yeah, 15, yeah. maybe 15, maybe. Well, I mean, it's not a you think. I'll yeah. give you that. He uh, remember he came in in that triple overtime game against Washington State when yes. Brett, Rippin, Brett Rippin went out with the concussion. He came in and finished that game off. They they you know lost the game late, but uh, should have probably won that game. Oh, yeah. Then he started the following week on a Thursday against New Mexico on national TV. It was his first start at Boise State, you know, right off the bat. And as I said, he played in every game, had fourteen touchdowns, and again. You know, when Brett Rippon came back, they thought Montel Cozart was good enough to deserve packages and deserve playing time, and he had 14 touchdowns that year. And that was the uh, oh, that was the 17 uh, Oregon Las Vegas Bowl game, Leighton Van Der Esch senior year. I mean, that mm. was one of the that was the last really dang good team, right? That Boise was, State's had. Was that the JP year where he asked Coach Harson about battling? Yeah, that was the battle, I believe. Yeah, that, that was, was it. The battle, I think it was Montel. <laughs> And Brett Rippon, nobody's battling here, damn it, JP. Nobody is battling. 
I, 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 <laughs> I wish I would have had that. I could have had that uh, clip ready. I forgot that was what that was about. You're right. But uh, I think it was those two guys. Yeah, I love it. That's man. awesome. Good for Montel Cozart. Hope he can uh, keep it going and get in there and see some action. We're going to talk uh, Marcus Shaver Jr. with our final couple of minutes here. But first, quick word, United Commercial Insurance. Check them out. They can write business insurance policies in 44 states around the country. So if you're a business owner or you're starting a business and you need that business insurance, or if you just want to see if you can get a better rate whether it's uh, the workers comp the liability all the insurances check them out united commercial insurance.com transportation compliance service as well thousand people a day are getting into that trucking industry and becoming truck drivers it's a booming industry right now but you can't do it yourself you need some help with all the permits and all the things you need to get out there on the road so let tcs take care of you give them a call check them out online transcompservice.com and they can uh, do get every step of the way get you out there towing that first load as soon as possible. And certainly my dentist, Boise Dentistry Co., Dr. Chris Minert, uh, they do a great job, and, and uh, we, our family is so happy we made the switch to Boise Dentistry Co. So if you're looking for a new dentist, a, a whole you know family, kids, adults, they do the whole thing. The whole family can go there. Great staff, very friendly, and Dr. Minert does a great job. they got locations all across the Treasure Valley. You can check them out, Boise Dentistry Co., Com. And I don't know if I should let the cat out of the bag or not, uh, but the, there's some NIL deals going on, Johnny, with uh, Boise Dentistry Co. and J.L. Skinner, which may mean that J.L. Skinner may be making an appearance at the uh, Bronco Nation News Golf Tournament uh, coming up in June. So uh, folks that are thinking about doing the tournament, there may be a, a couple athletes out there as well as coaches, and it sounds like J.L. Skinner uh, is going to be out there on behalf of Boise Dentistry Co. We may have an official announcement on that here in the near future but we got about six minutes left johnny and in our show we've been doing this series where we're talking about the boise state basketball roster and i almost took a full break on that and just focused on the nfl draft this week but uh, we only got a couple players left and so i figure we'll just we'll just power through it um but uh, marcus shaver jr is an interesting one today and then tomorrow we'll do tyson degenhart uh with me and tust but uh you know you think about Marcus Shaver, and I guess technically right now, I don't know if you say he's not on the team or he is on the team. He's, he's you know, declared for the draft while keeping his intentions open. But, you know, he came in and I thought really took a huge step forward last year, obviously hit all those huge game-winning shots. And we'll talk about his future in this team, you know, in a minute. But just with what Marcus Shaver Jr. did last year and what he showed, he became a an elite, reliable outside shooter. He could get to the rack and – for all the, you know, talk about all the other guys on the team and Acott and, you know, Key Jab and Degenhart and all this stuff. Marcus Shaver Jr., man, was as steady as they came. And I know he struggled at the end, and we'll talk about that. Big but time. When, when Big he was, time. When he was going good there, man, he he single-handedly won them some games in the middle of the season. Did, and that, and that certainly needs to be brought to the equation here, but it didn't end well. Um, I'm not saying for, for any particular reason. I don't know what happened with Shaver those last couple games, but – um the conference tournament, and then the NCAA tournament. He struggled to put the ball in the hole. Maybe it was fatigue catching up with him on a long season, a number of things it could have been, but no question, he was one of the better players, certainly better guards in the Mountain West last year. And this team, in my opinion, absolutely needs him and certainly should want him to come back, BJ, and be another leader, further his legacy. Like, let's get Marcus Shaver Jr. in a conversation with, like, Marks and Drimmick and James Webb and all these other guys that have played and Ryan Watkins and other Leon eras. Let's make sure Shaver stays in that conversation. He'll probably be in there anyway, but I mean, if he comes back next year and they go on another conference championship caliber run, then he's going to go into a whole nother stratosphere of being a Boise state basketball legend, if you will, or a guy that just doesn't slip through the cracks, a guy that people remember playing here and still want to talk about. That's the key thing. Just keep yourself in the conversation. I, I haven't seen a single mock draft that has Marcus Shaver Jr. drafted. If you have, let me know. I haven't seen one. And I'm uh, not to say that that doesn't mean he's not going to get drafted. Maybe there's one team in the second round that wants that flyer, but I haven't seen any discussion on that. I don't know if this is NBA draft or back to Boise State. Or is it NBA draft or any significant professional league somewhere or Boise State? Because I think Marcus Shaver Jr. is going to be able to play high-level professional basketball. It's just not going to be in the NBA yet, maybe down the road. So he needs to weigh that. Is it better to play 
high level professional basketball somewhere versus come back and play one more year at Boise State for maybe some NIL dollars here and there. Probably not a ton. Um, so he's got that decision to make. And I would probably lean to the side, BJ, that Marcus Shaver Jr. is playing professionally for the next time he plays basketball. Um, I don't think Boise State gets him back, unfortunately. And that's, I mean, that's good for all parties. I mean, Leon wants guys to play pro ball and whatnot. And I think Shaver will have that chance. And I don't see him back, but hope I'm wrong. I like watching him play. Well, I'll take the other side of it. I think you are wrong. I would predict that he comes back, um, you know, 13.3 points per game. Second on the team last year, he played a team high 33 minutes uh, per game. So he was not on the bench very often. He was out there. And, you know, ACOT was, was, uh, ended up running the point a lot more and Marcus played off. So I think him coming back and being mm -hmm. the true point guard, having the ball in his hands more, uh, maybe could help himself and help his game. It was March 31st, I believe, or March 30th, whatever it is, uh, when he declared for the draft. Uh, he had a team high 57 three pointers, started 34 of the 35 games last season. Obviously, had those four three pointers. Uh, in the final minute that either tied the game, gave Boise State the lead. Remember, he had the two in less than 48 hours at Utah That's State huge. and San Diego State. I mean, it was it was just uh, bonkers. Oh. The, the one at Fresno with with the couple seconds left where they inbounded it from the corner. But as you said, he was really sick, and I think a lot more sick than was uh, let on late in the season. He finished seven for 39 from the field, 17.9% 17, yeah. 17 from the field in the four postseason games. He was one for 14 from three-point range in the Mountain West tournament and in the Memphis game. Just one three is just not Marcus Shaver-like. He was one for 10 from the field against Memphis, uh, only had four points. I mean, if he gets a couple of those threes, you know, they may have a chance in that game. And so he was really sick. He just struggled. He just picked a bad time to, to have a little bit of a slump there. Um, but uh, I, I feel like uh, if he's the point guard, he has the ball in his hands more. It's his team, so to speak. I, I think, you know, with, with ACOT moving on and Key Jab moving on, I think Shaver's got a chance to come back and average 15-plus points a game and be a, a big-time uh, player for this team. So I, I think, all, yeah, all those things will happen if he comes back. I agree. He gets the point, he gets the point guard gig. He gets to average probably 15 plus, and the team's going to win a lot more games than it loses if Shaver's back. No question, BJ, but he's got to weigh that option. If he can make decent money playing in a higher level European league, he might have to consider that. And I'm sure he is. I'm sure he will. And we'll see what happens, man. You think he's coming back, though? Okay. I do. I do think he's in, ultimately going to come back now. May 1st is the deadline for the transfer portal. This doesn't really apply to Marcus Shaver, but you have to announce by May 1st, next Monday, if you're going to enter the transfer portal and uh, you know pursue – uh, a transfer so he says if a player does not decide by Sunday do they have to wait no if, if you don't decide by Sunday you can still enter the transfer portal but technically you would be uh, required to sit out next season they do expect a lot of waivers and things to be granted but if you want the immediate eligibility for sure you have to announce by Sunday that you are entering the transfer portal still no word on uh, Emmanuel Acott somebody asked about that um, Derek did point out the sickness still balled out got to give him some grace there uh Rudy's saying you should be wearing a Mariners shirt today with the sweep over the weekend. Uh, it was the Royals, though. Let's calm down a little bit. Uh, but, uh, uh, no, it's going to be interesting to see. And, and I think his mom moving to Boise, a lot of his family coming to a lot of the games. I think he wants to do that for another year. Why, well, go, play, so why go play overseas and not, you know, all of a sudden your family, you know, they hit 30, 40 people at some of these road games uh, down in, you know, in, in Vegas and Phoenix and stuff. So I think just, uh, you know, I, I think he comes back for another year. I think it's huge. Perry thinks he's gone. The way the announcement was worded, I think he's moving on. So maybe he's uh, agreeing with Johnny there, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Going to be a big uh, week on Idaho Sports Talk, Johnny. You got the draft on Thursday. I know you guys are going to be all over that this week. You and Prater and JP, three to six. Folks can listen weekdays uh, on KTIK.com, the KTIK app, 95.3 FM, 1350 AM as well. And, yes, real quickly, uh, Chabuzo Ogbo, the four-star recruit, was on the visit this weekend. Heard it went very well, but have not seen any kind of commitment or anything, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, I know that uh, he was in town and, and uh, from some eyewitness accounts was, was just balling in uh, some of the pickup games. So Texas Tech, uh, right? Yep, Texas Tech four-star transfer. So, Johnny, appreciate your time on a Monday, man. Great stuff, and we will be listening 3 o'clock today with you and Prater and JP. Thanks, guys. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll be back. Jay Test and myself tomorrow. Tyson Degenhart will join us uh, to talk about his season, so looking forward to that. That'll be Tuesday. Thanks to Montel Cozart as well. 
Sorry for going a minute and 10 seconds over here, JP. Still love you. We'll uh, talk to you guys later. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com.